Hello and welcome to another episode of Two Lads Garage. In this episode, I'm going to be working on my 1964 Pontiac Tempest here. And I am going to be changing out the master cylinder, getting rid of old def can, and putting a dual reservoir master cylinder in there. Originally, this video was going to be a two job video where I'm also replacing the carburetor and doing the brake while well, I went to edit it. Uh, that video came out to like 59 minutes. And I decided that was way too long. So either I was going to have to gloss over everything and not do a deep dive, or I was going to have to break it into two videos. So I decided to do the break it into two videos route. So anyway, I'm going to do a deep dive on converting from a single to a dual reservoir master cylinder. I found that I've done this many times on a Ford, but this is my first GM doing it, and I ran into a whole lot of roadblocks and stumbles along the way. So hopefully my difficulties will help y'all out and y'all have a smoother transition than I did. So let's get to it. All right, so I'm gonna give a little bit of a spoiler on this. I'm gonna say I've done this process numerous times on a Ford. This is my first time on a GM. Hoo hoo, I was in for a surprise. So if you're thinking of doing this process, I really recommend you watch this video all the way through because you're gonna see where I ran into some difficulty and some of the trials and tribulations I faced and Hopefully, it will keep you from experiencing the same thing and just give you a little bit of a heads up on what to expect and what roadblocks you might encounter. And hopefully, like I said, it'll make for a smoother process for you. All right, so I got the old Tempest pulled in the garage here. I backed it in. And my next order of business is this right here, the old death can. Now... I've mentioned several times on this channel, and probably on this episode, just how much I hate these things. And I'll explain to you why. This is, the real name for it is a single reservoir master cylinder. And they were permitted on all vehicles sold in the United States through the 1966 model year. After 1967, or excuse me, starting in 1967, um, they were all the manufacturers were required to go to a dual bowl master cylinder and this was a safety thing and the thing is I don't know if you can see it or not but right here there's one line leaving the master cylinder and it goes into a junction block divider block whatever you want to call it and goes to the individual wheel cylinders so when you push your brake pedal, you're pushing this non-compressible hydraulic brake fluid through your system that makes your wheel cylinders expand or your calipers contract, depending on if you have drum or disc brakes. Now what happens is if you have a failure anywhere in your system, doesn't matter if it's a right rear brake, if you have a failure and you lose hydraulic pressure there, the left front and all four brakes lose hydraulic pressure. And that is not good. When you have a dual bowl master cylinder, if you have a failure in brake pressure in the right rear, we'll use the same one, your fronts will keep on working. You'll lose your back brakes, but you'll keep your fronts. And that could be enough to save your life, get you out of a pickle, get you home, get to the shop. But nonetheless, it'll keep you some brakes rather than no brakes. So, what do you do if you got a car that has a def can or a single reservoir master cylinder or a suicide cylinder or whatever it is you like to call these things? Um, there are lots of groups online that can help you out with this on your specific vehicle, but a lot of 60s vehicles, basically you just look for a newer model year of what you have like 
for me, the first one I ever did was my Mustang. I had a 66 model Mustang. Well, I just put a 67 master cylinder on it. And when I go do that Red Galaxy, which will be my last death cam, thank God, they'll all be gone after that. I'm using a 67, 68 Galaxy um, master cylinder for that. For this, um, honestly, it's been quite a while since I ordered the master cylinder, so I don't remember exactly what model I told that I needed, but it was probably a 67 Tempest, 67 Le Mans, 68 Le Mans, something along those lines. Maybe a Malibu or something like that, but either way, I've got a newer model GM master, and it should bolt right up. And if I got any issues, well, I'll, I'll, I'll tackle that when I get there. So anyway, first thing to do is get this off. Now normally, I would hose down this line with some WD-40 liquid wrench, something along those lines. And I'll put a vice grip on the line itself to keep from wringing it off. Um, this particular one, I'm not that concerned about it because I'm going to be rewrapping my lines. Ah, crud. Anyway, there we go. It's a beautiful flare on that one. Alright, and then, let's hold that to the fireball. Looks like some half inch bolts. And get them out. Let me guess the rod does not want to let go of the pedal. Ah, that happens sometimes. See if I can get this out this way because us large frame people, we don't like to crawl under those dashes. Let go, let go. Let go of my death can. Don't adjust your screen. This is right. Anyway, the other night I got really frustrated. And sometimes when you get really frustrated with a job, the best thing you can do is just walk away for a while. So that's what I did. So anyway, I had thought about it since I walked away from it. And I think I was on the right track on pulling the rod off the pedal. Uh, it should turn loose from the master cylinder. Everything I've seen online says the rod should just come out of it, but it's stuck, so I'm going to try to get the entire rod out, and then once I can get it out, I've got a way to extract it, but can't really do it while it's in the car. So anyway, the walrus is going to go back into the rabbit hole and see if he can't get this done. <sighs> Isn't there a Beatles song about that? I'm a walrus or something like that. It'd be pretty fitting music to play right now, but the copyright police they have my hide over it. Alright, so I got the pen out and 
the key was there's a little hole on each side and I was able to stick a screwdriver over the steering column and tap it out with a ball peen hammer and that got the pin out. So anyway, here's the death can. And I pick up these plastic tubs from the $1.25 tree. So I always stick a master cylinder in these when going over my car's paint because brake fluid will eat up paint. This is a cheap, easy way to transport your man. Alright, so back here at the trailer. My next goal is to get this rod out. I need to reuse the rod. So, my first goal I'm going to try to get this snap ring out. So I got these Work Pro Tools pliers. I get the snap ring out of here. See how this works. Yeah, and out comes the ring. Come on by. I don't see any way I would ever pull that out. Now I gotta get it adapted to the new master. Yeah, this all be fun. Nope. Not at all. Alright, so I've got the master cylinder here in my bench vise and I got a dog that's trying to knock over my camera because she wants me to throw her frisbee. But anyway, this is my first time dealing with the um, GM master cylinders. Like I said, I'm used to the Fords. I've even done some Mopar. Never done a um, GM before. But anyway, it looks like I'm going to have to transfer what I just took off the old def can over to this. So, pull the snap ring out. Maybe not. Maybe not at all. Oh, I hope I haven't just messed up. We'll edit this out and act like it never happened. Alright, so, a couple of weeks have gone by since I last filmed on this, and that's because I had to wait on getting a new um, push rod in, because the old one was not compatible, and the new ones just weren't available in places. I ended up having to order it off eBay, and it took a while to get here. Just to give you an idea how long, when I started filming this, I had every intention of it being episode number 25. Assuming I get everything done today, it'll be 28. So, anyway, no use crying about it. I got the parts, I'm getting to work on it now. And Lord knows I got enough cars around here that if I got something I want to do, I can take another one. So anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to figure out exactly how to put this together. Now since it's a GM, I know I'm going to need this style. Let's see if I can get it to where you can see it. This fork style pedal piece. And it's going to have to thread on to a pusher. Anyway, started on here, and forgive the little whining you hear. My yellow lab, she doesn't really care about me getting brakes fixed on this car. She doesn't understand we can't go anywhere and have fun with it until I get brakes back on it. All she cares about is her frisbee. All right, so here's the old rod. And to be 100% honest with y'all, I wish I hadn't taken it apart trying to make it work for this. 
knowing what I know now, I definitely would not have. But nonetheless, I got it close just using the rust lines and all. So I'm going to take this and try to get an approximate length. This flange here pushed against the piston. So anyway, what I'm going to do is kind of line it up. See what I need to do to try to make this work. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I don't know how we could do this. All right, so I spent a little time off camera. Trying to figure out the angle of dangle and all, trying to get this rod link figured out with the parts they gave me. And if I use just this little gold piece here with a fork, it's too short. If I couple this extension on, it's too long. I need something in between. So what I figured I'm going to do is I'm going to take this style of um, pedal attachment that came with it that I'm not using. And I'm going to cut it right there or in that general range and make make that work. I'm just going to use this hacksaw. So now I'm going to get back in here. I'm going to try to make up the rod so I can finally make some progress on this. So anyway, I've got the piece I cut off. Go put screw it into the extension here. And I'll say while I'm doing this, if any of y'all know a better situation to use for a brake pedal push rod for a GM vehicle, please put it in the comments because while I'm sure that what I'm doing here will work, I'm, I'm convinced there's a better way. But I don't think this is the best way. That appears to be very close to the rod length. So at long glass, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple wrenches and I'm going to tighten all these jam nuts down to try to keep this length. And when I go and do my wall roof crawling rabbit hole again, I'll get the final adjustment made. But anyway, for now, we're close. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of jam everything together. Oops. So now, my next step is bench bleed. I don't think I ever get to this, but go ahead and bench bleed my master. All right, so I got my brake bleeding tackle box here. Keep all kind of brake working supplies in here. Over the years, I've discovered that tackle boxes really really work well for organizing parts <laughs> that one's 916s so up here was that and that was a half One, two, 
do just like I did cross thread a plastic fitting. That should be good and ruined now. Maybe not. Maybe I got lucky. Now I'll just take my hoses. Slab on the fittings. Well, you want to be a little stubborn, huh? Okay. I can deal with stubborn. You're going on regardless. And to keep them from wanting to flop, I'm going to put this clamp from the dollar twenty-five store on. But make sure you don't pinch your hoses off. Just get them so they're back down at the bottom. Now, just put some fluid in there. Now you just pump the piston. I'm just using a really big nut driver. And repeat this till it quits shooting air bubbles out. Alright, so now I've got the air blood out of it. I'm going to put a little more fluid back in here. No way, just some. Alright, so now I got my dollar store candy dish here. Or whatever that thing is. Because I hadn't the foggiest. Let's set the master in there so I can put it in the car without dribbling on the paint. All right, so I got the master transported back to the car. And now, all right, so got that on. We're just going to take our lock washers. And our nuts. And put it back together. Alright. So, got the master cylinder bolted up. Now I need to get it plumbed. I'm looking at things here. And I'm hoping for a miracle. To be honest with you. First of all, I look at this brake line that comes up here. And while I know it's bent the wrong direction and all, it appears that the fitting size may not be the right one. Alright, so I got my bender here. So let's go see if we can't make anything out of this old line. Sure would be nice. Now, a lot of times I wouldn't mess with a whole line like that. Just because, yeah, it always seems like you're opening up a can of worms. But this line's in good shape. When I revive this car, all these got replaced. And it's since been stored inside and been taken pretty good care of. I got some faith in them. And that fits the wrong size. So keep from dripping any more fluid. Just stick this line back in. Alright, so now I'm going to just try to get these lines off. And hopefully, hopefully. Good jeez. I 
really hope I'm wrong to break my flying size, but I don't think I am. Yeah, that's a quarter inch. But you know, I ain't got any of that. Oh boy. Alright, so I know I'm going to have to get a replacement one of these lines. Yeah, it's not what I wanted to do, but it's what I got to do. So anyway, I'm going to need to go get me a quarter inch brake line. Make sure I get the right fittings. Maybe I could just get a fitting adapter. Yeah, I'll figure something out. But anyway, before I do all that, let's see if I can't get this brake line that goes to the rear adapted. Alright, so we got that off. Now in the distribution block, you're going to want to put one of these brass plugs where the rear brake line used to go. Alright, now the brake line to the back. I'm going to just put one of these couplers, this one right here on. Alright, so I went and got my brake line that I've been using on the Falcon in the truck. And so in the other videos, I'm going to use it on this. Go go ahead and fabricate my rear line. And also got to thinking about some stuff with other vehicles I've worked on and the lines I've used. And the fact that with the exception of us, I ain't never had a quarter inch brake line. So I got to thinking about it and when I go to the setup um, each reservoir is only pushing the two wheels where before with the old one it was pushing all four so I would need a bigger line so I thought maybe it wasn't necessary maybe I could use three sixteenths of everything just like I do with everything else so I looked it up and I was confirmed, yes, the fact that I'm using a dual reservoir master cylinder and I'm splitting the brake system up, I can use three sixteenths without a problem everywhere, so that saved me a trip to the parts store. And for that I'm glad. So anyway, I'm going to do a double flare on this, got my snap on tubing bender. This is about the only snap-on tool I got. I got nothing against snap-on. I'm just cheap. And someone who's cheap and snap-on just tend not to go together. But I got tired of constantly breaking the, um, the regular flaring tools so I, I got me a snap on one so far so good eh, sugar puts Sugar puts you like that word. And I do my best not to cuss on camera. I'm trying to get better at cussing off camera, not doing that so much, but it means a lot to me for this for this program, this show I'm doing on YouTube. I want a G rating. So I know they don't do that for YouTube videos, but if they did. You know, that's what I really want, and that's, you know, we need to get kids in this hobby, it's, we need to keep the next generation involved, so I, I really, really do my best to keep this a family-friendly, child-friendly show.
Now, one thing I've done, and it stands to reason because I've done a beautiful flare, is I've got to put my nut on it. But, I'm not going to get upset because this is just the first flare. Get me approximate length on this. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cutter off. Here are my cutters. Alright, so I got my cutters. Alright, so here we go. Now, try to find my tubing bender right here. And before I do that, before I really screw up, I need to get the correct fitting for this. Go ahead and slide that on my line. See, told you forgetting that flare wasn't going to be an issue. So anyway, just going to go ahead. Just need a common on the other side. So slap it on and flare this end. Alright, so I got this brake lab made up. Got the fitting on there. God, I hope it's the right one. And anyway, we'll go ahead, take this bleeder fitting out. Should have a little easier time with a loose line. Yes, and it's the right size fitting, thank goodness. And naturally, I grabbed a metric fitting. And there's some good news and bad news with that. Bad news is, my wrench ain't fitting. The good news, however, is the line is screwing in. It's only got a metric hit on the nuts, so. Anyway. Got my 10 millimeter wrench. Now, thankfully, I just need to make up a line for the other reservoir. So I got the line flared and my nuts on, so now I'm just going to put a curve in it, my tubing bender. So, now I get the new line on. Who is dinging the dinging ding out of me? Okay, at this point I now have my lines on and I'm going to go ahead and put the cover on the master cylinder just to keep the moisture from the air and whatnot out of there. And just going to use a wrench for some leverage. It appears I might have the wrong size wrench. Let's see if I can't find a smaller one. Yeah, that works better. Right. Now that we've got everything cooked up, it's just time for me to crawl under the dash and hook all that up. You know how much I look forward to that. <laughs> okay, so I figured I'd bring y'all up under the dash with me. And what you can see right there where I'm pointing at, that is the master cylinder. That's where the rod goes. And so we're going to have to get the rod to go in there. Alright, and through that hole up there, you put a pin slides through, gets your rod, your pedal, and you put a carter key on the end of it. Okay, so the contraption of this inner threaded rod right here, I'm going to have to cut down some, get it go on the pedal. Now, I'm learning as I go, and I really hope this video helps some of y'all out because you can learn from some of my mistakes and not go through some of the ish I'm going through. But I'm going to have to cut it down some. Also, if you want to make your job easier, stick this in the master cylinder before you poke it through the firewall. Um, it would have made my job easier. But anyway, 
I'm going to go ahead and cut the piece down, put it back together, and we're going to try again. All right, I'm not feeling doing the hacksaw thing again, so... I'm going to use the nut. I left the nut on there on purpose so I could chase the threads. Oh, they're actually in pretty good shape. And I did think before I took it all apart to count the amount of threads between here and here. In this case, it was four. Okay, so time to try again. All right, so finally, at long last, I got everything hooked up here. Including that spring, and yeah, that was no fun task. But anyway, there it all is. But yeah, I had to take the um, brake light switch out to get that spring back in. That was no picnic. And just a few other miscellaneous things. But anyway, we got all hooked up. Now the only thing left is to bleed the brakes. So anyway, I'm gonna bleed the brakes later. It's getting late and I spent a whole lot longer on this than I thought I would. So anyway, that's the process of converting a 64 Pontiac Tempest. I imagine many other A bodies in the era are close, possibly any GM from the air is close to this. But, like I said before, I've done this numerous times on Ford. Never been a real involved process. Never had any real issues. So I assume the GM would be the same. And, whew, yeah, I really, I had a lot of, ran into a lot of unexpected things on this. But we got it done, worked through it. Just took a little longer than I thought. And maybe this video will help some of y'all that are doing the same thing, not run into some of the roadblocks I have, and maybe have a little smoother process. But anyway, please, if you could, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Helps the channel out a lot. I'm looking to bring some more great stuff in here. I've got some things I'm really excited about coming up in the future. Ready to get that Falcon and the truck back on the road. Those projects have drug on longer than I intended. I think all of them do. But anyway, y'all take care of your projects and stay safe out there and I'll see you soon.